In this video, I'm going to share with you a strategy that will let you evaluate indeterminate limits easily. Let's get started. Let us first recall all the indeterminate forms when evaluating limits. So let's say we're computing for limit of, uh, let's say, first of a fraction or a quotient f of x over g of x. And this could be limit at infinity or limit at a or a one-sided limit. And when we evaluate this kind of limit, the indeterminate forms are, so we have the following indeterminate forms. We have the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. This form here includes all the limits where the numerator f of x goes to either infinity or negative infinity, plus or minus infinity, and g of x goes to either positive or negative infinity. And we denote all these cases by just infinity over infinity. The second case, okay, so when we evaluate, for example, limit of a product, let's say product of uh, two functions, f of x times g of x, then we have the indeterminate form 0 times infinity. This means that the limit of one factor, say the f of x, goes to 0, and the limit of the other factor, g of x, is either positive infinity or negative infinity. Third, when we compute for limit of a difference, let's say f of x minus g of x, then we may have the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity. And this includes the case wherein f of x goes to negative infinity and your g of x goes to negative infinity. And the last case, is when we evaluate the limits of functions of the form f of x raised to g of x. And we have three indeterminate forms here. We have the form 0 raised to 0. Next, we have the form 1 to infinity. And then the last one, the form infinity to 0. Now, this second form here includes the limit of the form 1 raised to plus or minus infinity. And the third one includes the case where f of x tends to plus or minus infinity and the function g of x tends to 0. Now, let me share with you strategies in evaluating these indeterminate limits. So we have these uh, four categories here. So for this uh, first category, our strategy will be, of course, we know it already. We just have to apply El Hopital's rule. So apply El Hopital's uh, rule. Now, how do we evaluate this indeterminate form 0 times infinity? So this form of limit can be written in the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And after writing it in either of this form, we can already apply El Hopital's rule. So the first step here is to write your function f of x times g of x as what? f over 1 over g or write it as g over 1 over f. And this will be in the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So after writing it in this form, you can already use El Hopital's rule. So the second step here is to use El Hopital's rule. Now, how about if we have the limit form infinity minus infinity? So to evaluate this kind of limit, we might need to do some algebraic manipulation. So here we might need to do a factoring to make the limit obvious. 
we might need to uh, combine, let's say, uh, f and g into a single fraction. So combine uh, into a single fraction. Single fraction. Or we might need to do rationalization. So in this uh, case, we might need to do rationalization. Rationalization. Removing radicals. And these algebraic methods might let you evaluate the limit already or might convert the limit form into the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, where again we can use L. Hopital's rule. So in this case, you might need to apply L. Hopital's rule. Keep in mind that we might need to apply L. Hopital's rule multiple times in order to find the limit. Note, however, that when you apply L. Hopital's rule more than once, try to simplify the function before applying L. Hopital's rule again. Also, uh, there might be time that uh, applying L. Hopital's rule will lead you to a strange situation. And when I say strange situation, it might lead you to nowhere, even if you apply El Hopital's rule probably five times, six times, or 100 times. And in those cases, then you may try to evaluate the limit algebraically instead of using El Hopital's rule. Now, how do we evaluate these last three indeterminate forms? The strategy here is to write f of x raised to g of x as e raised to g of x ln of f of x. How did we get this expression? So keep in mind that f of x can be written as e raised to ln of f of x. It's like property of exponential and logarithmic function using like e to the ln x equals x. So therefore, we can write the f of x as e raised to ln f of x. And when you raise that to g of x, you'll get this one, e raised to g of x ln of f of x. Now, if we look at the limit form of this g of x ln of f of x, it is actually in the form 0 times infinity, which we know from this second category that such limit is an indeterminate form. So the strategy in evaluating this limit here is to first evaluate the limit of this power g of x ln of f of x because it has the indeterminate form 0 times infinity. So the first step here is to find the limit, find the limit of the power g of x ln of f of x. Of course, in this case, we need again the L. Hopital's rule. So using L. Hopital's rule and if this limit is equal to, let's say, let's represent the limit using these backs here, then the limit of f of x raised to g of x whether that is limit at infinity or limit at a number a or a one-sided limit at a, is equal to e raised to that limit that you obtained from step 1. So if the limit here is equal to 5, then the limit of the original function is e raised to 5. If the limit here is negative infinity, then the limit of the original function is e raised to negative infinity, which is equal to 0. And if the limit is equal to infinity, then the limit of the original function is e raised to infinity, which is equal to infinity. Now, do you have other strategies in evaluating these indeterminate limits? If you have some, please let me know in the comments section below. I hope uh, these strategies uh, are helpful to you. So uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you in my next video.